Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to start with our second organic compound, homologous series. And today we'll look at alkenes. Now alkenes are classified as a group of hydrocarbons or organic compounds consisting of at least one double bonded carbon to carbon atoms. The general formula for alkenes is CnH2n. Remember that n represents the number of carbon atoms. Now let's put this all together as we did with alkenes. Now to be double bonded carbon to carbon means that between two carbon atoms there must be a double bond and this is a double bond right here. So in this example we have only one double bond. To be hydrocarbon, it means that the compound consists of carbon and hydrogen. Let's apply the concept of our general formula. So the general formula is CnH2n. What this means is that you have twice as much hydrogen as carbon. So in this example, we have four carbon atoms. Therefore, we must have eight hydrogen atoms. So let's do a quick check. So we have two hydrogen right here, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I want you to notice something special right here. Because of the double bond, these two carbon atoms do not have the full complement of the possible hydrogen atoms. And so we classify this type of compound as being unsaturated. Now, to name simple alkenes, as we did with alkenes, what we must consider is the prefix, the suffix, and then merge them, we get our name. Now, what I wanted to consider, right, is remember that we said earlier that alkenes must have a carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bond. So that tells you a story. Now, let's quickly draw this table and then get into it. Now, what I want to point out is that the first member of the alkene group must start with two carbon atoms. So if it's two carbon atoms, it's going to be eth, three prop, four but, five pent, six x, seven ept, eight oct, nine none, ten dec. So why the lowest member of the alkene group must be C2 is because there must be a double bond between the two carbon atoms. The suffix for alkene is ene or E-N-E. -E. And so to merge this prefix and the suffix together, what we'll get here as the naming for each of these based on the number of carbons will be ethene, Propene, butene, pentene, exene, eptene, octene, nonene, and decene. Now, let's now apply an example using the general formula. So let's take, for example, the number of carbon is 5. Now I want you to think about it. What will be the number of hydrogen? And if you're guessing 10, then you're absolutely correct. So it'll be C5H10. Beautiful going. Now on this, because of 5 carbon, it is known as pentene. Now let's look at the formula for the other members of this group. And so we'll just do a few examples. So I'm going to give you all of them, but just point out a few examples right here. And so let's take, for example, propene. We have 3 carbons. Therefore, we must have 6 hydrogen. Let's look for eptene. If it is 7 carbon, then we must have 14 hydrogen because the general formula is CnH2n. For nonene, then we have 9 carbons. Then we must have 18 hydrogen. Now, let's look at some structural examples for alkene. But before I do that, let me do a quick reminder. And I want to remind you that between the carbon atoms, at least two of them, there must be a double bond. 
And what I want to point out is that for any given carbon atom, there must be four maximum single bonds, or at least, to think about it in this way, four lines. So since we have two lines for this carbon here, how many more lines or bond can we place on this carbon can only be two more. Around the second carbon, already we have two lines here, so how many more lines can we put there? Will be two more lines. And so you need to remember that every carbon atom must have four total lines around it. All right, so let's now jump into our first example. This one is ethene, which is the simplest alkene. And so again, we have two lines here, so we need only two more lines on the first one, and also on the second one, two more lines. And remember, when you draw these lines, since you're drawing hydrocarbons, then you can put your hydrogen atoms where these lines are. And so now we know that our structural formula will look like this for ethene, and our condensed formula will be CH2, double bond CH2. And if you look at it carefully, you notice the number of hydrogen is twice as much as the number of carbon. Our next example is propene. Again, the double bond is there. How many hydrogen can we put here? You can guess that amount. So, of course, it's going to be two. The second one, you have already three lines. So, let's do it again. So, we have here, we have one line. So, put three more lines. So, I'm just going to go back a little bit so you could look at it carefully so you don't miss this. So, notice here, you have one line here, two lines here. So, around this carbon, it is three lines. So, it requires only one more line. The last carbon has one line, so it requires three more lines. Okay, so I hope you catch that, and you can go back to make sure you understand how to draw these number of lines. And so we could put our hydrogen um, atoms. And so if you notice this now, we have three carbon atoms, so therefore we should have six hydrogen atoms as well. And so our condensed structural formula will be CH2, double bond, CH. Single bond CH3, and that is for propene. Our next example here is butene. Again, our double bond is present. Remember, how many more lines can we draw here since we have two? Is only two more lines. This carbon has two lines here, one line here, so we need only one more line, which is a single bond. And then this carbon here has two lines or two single bonds, so we need to draw two more single bonds. The last carbon has one single bond, so we need three more bonds. And we could put our hydrogen atoms, respectively, or according to these lines or bond. And so this will, this will be our structural formula. So our condensed formula will be CH2, double bond, CH, single bond, CH2, single bond CH3. The properties of alkenes include one, that alkenes are nonpolar, and remember what it means is that there's no distinct positive and negative end, negative ends. Also what it means is that all around the molecule will be the same. The second property is that alkenes they are insoluble in water. And the reason for that, as we mentioned before with alkenes, since alkenes are nonpolar, water is polar, nonpolar substances do not dissolve in polar substances. The smaller ones, they are gases, just as in alkenes. So the ranging from carbon 2 to carbon 4, they are gases. As the structure becomes more complex, then it turns into liquids and then go into solids. Alkenes are more reactive than al alkenes are more reactive than alkenes. Alkenes are classified to be unsaturated, and the reason for that is because there's a double bond. It means that where the double bond is, those carbon do not consist the full potential or the possibility of hydrogen atoms. 
Now, the types of alkenes, you could have straight chain, you could have branch, you could have cyclic, or otherwise called closed chains. And so an example of a straight chain here is a continuous flow or a continuous pathway, or you may classify it to be linear. And so it would be a straight line. If it's branch, then you will have one straight line, and then you will have some branch attached to it. In some cases, you could have more than one branch as well. So depending on how you want to draw your structure or how big your structure is. And for cyclic, remember, it is closed, so there is no necessarily end. So there is a continuous path between the carbon atoms. They are all connected. And so if you look carefully, the number of carbon atoms and the number of hydrogen atoms in all of these, they are exactly the same. And so the first one here will be known as butene. The second one, since it's branch, we're going to call that now isobutene. Is the same as butene, but the difference is the structure is different. So they both have the same molecular formula because they have the same number of carbon atoms, the same number of hydrogen atoms. So if you just count these, you will realize that you have four carbon atoms and eight hydrogen atoms. So this branch structure is an isomer of the straight chain. The closed chain one as cyclic, now it will name cyclobutene. All right, and so this is it for us. And I just want to tell you, I truly appreciate you watching this lesson and learn as much as you possibly can. And I want to tell you something. As a matter of fact, this should be a reminder because you should know this. And I want to tell you that you are beautifully created and formed with purpose. Have a wonderful and a blessed day. See you soon.